Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I have decided I will blog daily from my country since the start of this awful war with Russia. No one expected it will take a year, but we have to continue until we win. If you're new to my channel, please go and learn more about my videos and if you like them, do subscribe because the world needs to know more about Ukraine. And reading your comments, communicating with you via email and on our live chats, I see that there are some things that I know and you don't about this part of the world and uh, many things that I take for granted need additional clarification. So today we have the next video about Belarus. Those of you who are new to the channel, I live in a semi-safe zone of Ukraine that borders Poland, European Union and Belarus. That's why we keep uh, our attention close on this zone, even I believe nothing serious will come from that territory. Also, I consider Belarus a country that is at war with Ukraine because they have given all of their infrastructure weapons to the disposal of Russian army. Many of the attacks, many of the missiles were targeted on Ukraine from the territory of Belarus. But the fact is that today this is not a free and independent country. It is run by a so-called self-proclaimed dictator President Lukashenko who is in total dependence on Putin and their regimes like support each other and Lukashenko is impossible without Putin. That's why he actually does not have a choice. But many of you believe that Belarus is still independent and that some questions can be negotiated or influenced or on country we can lose Belarus and it will be russified. The problem is it is already extremely russified and a part of the union country as they like calling it since 1999. I have been to Belarus and I can tell you that this is like traveling in time. You return back to the Soviet era, Soviet shops and so on. Of course, there are some beautiful things you can discover in Minsk or elsewhere tasty products and clean roads, but in general, the atmosphere is as of the times of Cold War, the times of the Soviet Union. Same as people's attitudes, fashion, I don't know, style of TV and so on. By the way, very similar things can be said about Russia. Very often when I watched their television, like in 2010, for example, I had uh, I could have comparison it uh, to Ukrainian television like 20 years ago. They are extremely backward. Why? Not only because they are bad and they are brainwashed, but also because they are extremely closed. Their society does not want to learn anything from the world and as a result they are boiling in their own source and nothing new comes and it all looks like their past was the best thing and they are not future oriented. So. Uh, Belarus is just the same, but with a very serious difference. Belarus people are not that nationalistic or not that chauvinistic as Russians. Russians, together with Putin, have this empire vision of the world and they want to rule other countries. They dis demonstrate disrespect to cultures and languages. And those of you who uh, came in contact with Russians, for example, traveling the world in various hotels can confirm that I'm saying the truth. Belarus people are different, they are more tolerant, more reserved, uh, less visible, and this is the first and important difference that uh, results in their attitude to this war. The majority of Belarus people do not support this war and they don't want to be mobilized, they don't want to come and loot Ukraine. That's why various uh, revolutionary parties and movements take place right now in Belarus. And at least in 2020, they tried to stop Lukashenko and to prevent him from self-proclamation of presidency for the next term. And that was a very important signal. And I wish we and the rest of the world would have supported this revolution, this silent revolution in Belarus stronger. And imagine how different uh, and how much easier it would be to fight with Russia if Belarus was same democratic as, for example, Poland or Lithuania. Then Russians wouldn't have many of the platforms from which they can threaten Ukraine and the rest of the world.
But we did not do that. Belarus, Belarus people are not that aggressive. They did not, they gave up at a certain point of time and Lukashenko remained a president. He understands that he is not legitimate because come on, you cannot run a country for 30 years. I think it's kind of sad. Like when you go to school, you graduate, you get married. I don't know, you die and you have one and the same president. I think like you must have some feelings something's going wrong with my country if you have one president for the all the period of time that you remember yourself so this is the case with Lukashenko and one of the reasons why he is so dependent uh, on Putin is that he understands that his own society does not support him and he needs sometimes the intrusion of uh, Russian police intelligence services and so on so uh, in 1999, uh, Belarus and Russia signed an agreement on something like a union state. And they are trying to move in the direction of each other. But in case with Russia, same as in case with Soviet Union, it is not about mutual cultural exchange. It's about uh, Russification. So today, Belarus is already extremely Russified. It is not a danger that we've learned about when some of the documents um, became um, visible recently. It was, they were revealed that by 2030, Russia wanted to take over Belarus completely. But this process started long ago. And for example, now 90% of all Belarus kindergarten are Russian speaking. 86 schools and 99.9% .9 of university also use Russian language as the language of official communication. Customs union, something that Yanukovych, President Yanukovych wanted to put us in instead of European Union and association with the European Union back in 2013, which led to the start of uh, the Revolution of Dignity. Go and check our new Russian crimes episode where I speak about that. So at that moment, Yanukovych also wanted us to join customs unit and that union. And that customs union with Russia means that like every product, every service must be described in Russian. And all the other languages are unnecessary. So you can be 100% confident that all the products, goods, services, businesses, economic and financial operations in Belarus are conducted in, of course, Russian. And there are very, very, very few, like less than 2% of Belarus people who actively use Belarus language, which is beautiful, interesting and old. And by the way, much closer to Ukrainian than Russian. Uh, like two five percent of people use it actively and the majority don't even recognize that language they are totally russified and that is a tragedy actually i feel really sorry for this culture and uh, its language because like when you lose a culture when you lose a language the world becomes a poorer place so it all started long ago and at this moment the country is silently occupied by Russia and totally russified. So all the plans that became known after the reveal of the document that Russian, Russia planned to annex Belarus by 2030 is actually nothing new. It is just a document that structures it all and shows like long-term plans, short-term plans and how they all uh, wanted to unify this political, economic and military uh, systems. For example, they plan by 2030 to have common currency, to have one system of taxation, to have one military police system and all of that. But even now, for example, I would never travel to Belarus because I realize that uh, I will have problems there, even though it's not Russia. But they have joined uh, services, they have joined police, and they will definitely learn that I'm not the best person to um, invite to the country. But I don't uh, plan that. Less than 10% of books, even in 2014, that were published in Belarus, were published in Belarus language. All of them were mainly Russian. So this is an active dying process of a culture aided by, once again, Russian orgs. So I'm really glad to see that there are lots of processes inside the country. Many of them are hidden, but these initiatives are supported by a population. And there are many young, brave Belarus people who are fighting in Ukraine and who are fighting inside Belarus. And recently they had an accident on Machulishche airfield, which is close to Minsk, the capital of Belarus, where an, a Russian uh, jet exploded. 
Nobody knows why, but it's very likely that this was an act of sabotage from Belarus activists who do not support war in Ukraine. And that's why with each day it's more and more difficult for Lukashenko to maneuver. But I personally have more hopes for Belarus society. And if they did not have this poisonous, toxic uh, influence of Russia, if they were not so much dependent and the Lukashenko dictator is so much dependent on Russia, uh, their people in general are more open and I think less brainwashed. So it will be easier to liberate and change Belarus society. Hopefully retaining them back their culture and their language. That is a Ukrainian Nazi speaking like I want Belarus to be Belarus, not to be Russia. Remember, when the Russian describes someone as a Nazi, it means that um, that person does not speak or does not want to speak Russian or does not demonstrate a subordination to Russian culture. That's the only definition of a Nazi for a Russian. Any kind of uh, like open person that respects other cultures but says that Russians are not in priority is already an enemy to them. So be careful and take a good look, especially those countries that are ex-Soviet republics, because there are lots of things that Russians silently russify, either business or education or various cultural initiatives or trading something. But anyway, they want to keep all of us dependent on them. But it is really good that some different ideas and wins appear in Europe and even the Supreme Org Putin starts talking about the collapse of Russia. If nothing tremendous happens in Ukrainian news tomorrow, I want to speak to you about that. And in the comments below, let me know, would you like to hear more about my opinion on the collapse of Russia? And do you believe this is possible? And do you support the collapse of Russia? Or do you think this is going to be a geopolitical catastrophe? Thank you once again for watching, becoming my patrons, buying me coffees, helping me developing that community. I'm extremely grateful for support, advice and friendship that exists between us. Slava Ukraina!